sing it, just hold on. He's always on time But when you're broke and don't have money No, don't have a dime yeah. The race is not given To the swift nor the strong But it's given to the one That keeps holding on Hold on Everybody help me sing it yeah. It's gonna be It's gonna be alright Everybody help me sing it Just hold Don't have a dime The race is not given To the swift nor the strong But it's given to the one That keeps holding on Hold on Hold on Hold on It's gonna be It's gonna be alright You wanna wave your hand and say Hold on
All right, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. I'm going to say it again, praise the Lord, everybody. I need to hear some horns honking. Hallelujah. Welcome to the Cathedral of Praise Church Ministries, 406 C South Main Street in the marvelous city of Hinesville, Georgia, where we have taken over the parking lot. Yeah. And we are excited on this day. We want to welcome those of you who are streaming live on Facebook. Welcome to the ministry gift that we are about to bring to you, which is the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, showing everybody in the world without a faith what the enemy is doing. We're going to do ministry one way or the other. One way or the other, we're going to lift up the name of Jesus. So listen, I need you all to remain excited. I need you all to give God praise wherever you may be. Glory. Amen. We're starting off Holy Week in a little kind of different way. But how many you know we're still going to give him the glory? We're still going to give him the honor. We're still going to give him the praise. So those of you that are watching us live on Facebook, like, tag, share the broadcast. We're going to praise him. We're going to worship him. We're going to amen, serve the Lord's communion. And then we are going to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, receive our praise and worship ministry as we get ready to go forth with the Lord.
armor, God. We give you praise on today, God. Amen. Is there anybody that want more of God on today? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad you said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. In this case, the house of the Lord may be a parking lot full of cars, but God is still God. Amen. So let you guys be a parking lot. Thanks to God who are a part of the Cathedral of Praise. We miss you being able to just hug and embrace and share with one another. So I thought it would be good for us to get together, even if it was just peering at people and looking at them through their cars. Yes, your beautiful face. Hey, Amen. If you are here and you want us to know that you're here, would you honk that horn from the one more time? Can you hear what I'm saying? If you are online and you couldn't be here today, would you let us know? Just give us a hallelujah online. Let us know how much you appreciate us. Amen. Our first lady is here. She's in on us. We appreciate you, baby. Amen. Thank God for you. Hallelujah. Today we want to yet take an opportunity to remember that this is the beginning of Holy Week. 
Today is still Palm Sunday. And then all week long, this is going to be Holy Week. And it's a challenge for us who are in the body of Christ. Because for the first time that I know of, we will be able to be in the house of the Lord during Holy Week. But I'm so grateful that a building does not contain our yes, praise. Lord. A building does not contain our worship. And we may not be able to be in the building on Easter Sunday morning. But Jesus wasn't in the grave on Easter Sunday morning. So we ain't good company. We may not be in a building. We can raised up from the building as the Lord was raised up from the grave. So we're excited about this coming week. Amen. We're excited about, I feel like preaching already and I'm going to have to stop. Amen. But we're, we're excited about what the Lord is going to be doing. So, uh, amen. Elder Stoner, we appreciate God for you, man. May the Lord bless each one of you. We say welcome, welcome, welcome. If we have any first-time viewers that are on the broadcast, we extend a cathedral of praise. Welcome to you. If there's anyone out there that's with us for the first time, we extend a welcome unto you. But how I many you know we're going to have church this morning? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Some of y'all can kick in the back seat. Some of y'all ain't in the driver's seat. You got a little leg room. You can give God some praise. So we're excited about what the Lord is going to do. And let's have church on today. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God. Yes, sir. As a kid, as a kid we used to drive up and down the highway. And every time we used to see a tractor trailer, all we used to be, we used to go like this. And they would hit that horn, amen. And they yes. would blow it. Amen. Can I get the saints to just blow them horns? Come on. Come on. Come on. You shall not be moved. Yes, sir. Amen. Like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water, we will not be moved. Somehow we're going to find a way to fellowship one with another. And for those of you who may be wondering, we're not breaking any of the governor's executive orders. We're not Hallelujah. breaking anything that our city has assigned for us to do. We're doing our best to make sure that we're praying, we're practical, and we are prepared. But today we're going to enjoy the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So thank you again for joining us. Thank you for being with us. And we appreciate you. Amen. All right. Amen. I'm just anticipating a great time in the Lord on today. Amen. Amen. I hope you feel the same way. Amen. Elder Shaletta is coming with our announcements, and at this time, she's going to do our announcements and our offering at this time. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Cathedral. Good morning to you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Good morning to you. These are our announcements. I'm going to give them to you, and we're going to move right out. The way, amen. amen. Good morning to our Facebook viewers. Amen. Welcome to another anointed service at the Cathedral of Praise in the parking lot. Yes, yes, yes. yes hallelujah. Woo. Some folks going to the beach today, but we in the parking lot. We in the parking lot. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, amen. As Bishop has previously said, we will be serving communion on today. And we're streaming live every Sunday morning right here from the church, streaming live. So make sure you put that information out on Wednesday nights, Wednesday evenings, 7 o'clock prayer on Zoom, as well as we will connect for our Bible study at 7.30 p.m. By now, everybody should have it down packed. If not, just contact the office. Use the same code that Bishop sent out last week to log on to Zoom. If you have any questions, just give me a call. I am here in the office half a day on Tuesdays and half a day on Thursday. If you need to stop by the church, you can stop by the church. Also, this Wednesday, parents, parents make note, this Wednesday at 6 o'clock from 6 to 6.30, our bishop wants to meet with the young people on Zoom. Amen. Okay, Amen. 6 to 6.30, he wants to meet with your young person on Zoom. If you would be so kind to make sure they are present. 30 minutes, and then we're going to go right into prayer. Also, we are preparing some care packages for the children. They're going to be ready by the end of this week, and I'll send you a message to let you know you can just stop by the church and pick them up. We miss the young people. Blow your arms Anyway, we miss the young people, amen, and we are yet praying for you all, all right? And these are announcements. Also, we want to recognize birthdays. We are in the month of April, hallelujah. Yes. So we want to say happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to our, our, our August people, sorry, our April oh, people, yes. our April people, and to our April anniversary. 
wedding. If you are celebrating a wedding anniversary in the month of April, we just want to say happy anniversary and happy birthday to you. Amen. Blow your horn if that's you. All right, type your name on in the comments if that's you on Facebook. Happy birthday and happy anniversary. Amen. And these are your announcements. We are here to receive your gifts. Hallelujah. Are you ready to give? Yes, Lord. Let bread on you all. Just let the bread on you all just for a few minutes. You all have been showing out in your giving. Locked up in the house and all. You've been burning up push pay. Give yourselves a hand. Go ahead and blow your horn. For trusting the Lord and believing the Lord with your gift and supporting your ministry. Amen. We're going to ask that if you have your seed on this morning that you would sow $20 into the ministry on today. Amen. And by now, I many of you know that you can continue to give through our push pay system. If you are online, listen to us very attentively. If you're a visitor viewing for the very, very first time, it's very, very easy to sow into our ministry. Our system is very easy and it's safe. Amen. We use a system called Push Pay. Push Pay is an online um, system of giving. You want to text. Open up your browser and your text messages is very, very easy. You want to text these numbers as your address. 77977. I think she have it up on the screen. 77977. It's just like you're sending a text message. The message you're going to type in C O. P give C O P G I V E. Hit send. Follow the prompts, and that those monies are going to go straight into our bank account. Amen. And the Lord's work would continue to go forward and move <coughs> forward. Amen. All because of you, because you've been faithful in your giving. Push pay is one method. You can also go to our website. You can visit our website www.cathedralofpraiseministries.net. Click on the purple heart on the home page, and that's going to connect you to our push pay system as well. Immediately following the service, the drive through service, if you want to drive up to the front of the church because you're not going to use push pay and you would like to use your debit card or you want to give your tithe or your offering by way of putting it in the tithe box. I will stay in the office for 30 minutes after all of this is over. One person at a time walk in the church and we'll take care of you and we'll process your debit card. Where there's a will, there's going to be a way. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord hand for our love the Lord. Because of your faithfulness and your dedication to this ministry that we can keep moving forward and doing the great things the Lord has called us to do. Amen. Thank you again for your giving. Let us pray if we would. Father, we thank you for the gift and the giver. Lord, we thank you for the heart and willingness to sow and give into your kingdom. Bless now this seed, some 36 and 100 fold. In Jesus' name we do pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for your liberality in giving. Amen. Are you ready for the word of God? appreciate the great God that we serve for our bishop in the form of Dr. Kevin L. Church. We praise God for this apostolic voice that we have that we are going to hear the word from the Lord on this morning. Amen. Are you praying for our bishop? Are you praying for our bishop? Amen. Are you praying for his family? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I'm going to introduce this song, present this song, and introduce the others, those there on Facebook. He is a man of God from the Niagara Falls, New York area, retired, stayed here in Hinesville, started the ministry here in Hinesville, and have been pastoring for over 21, going on 22 years. Amen. Amen. And so without further ado, we want to introduce the song and present to others our pastor, the teacher, great teacher he is, and founder. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, hope. 
for Jesus from the West Side. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody give a hallelujah online. Amen. We honor our Heavenly Father who is our maker and our creator. We praise him for his son who is our Savior, Jesus the Christ. We thank him and you go for the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. We're just excited here at 406 C South Main Street. This is quite unique what we are doing in terms of ministry uh, on today. And so if we have a few hiccups, y'all, y'all, y'all forgive us. I mean, it's not every day that you're called upon to have church outside, but the Lord knows what he's doing. And so we're thankful and we're grateful for that. Amen. Before we get ready to serve you, amen, the word of God, we are going to also serve you the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And so we're going to ask those of you who are online to be patient momentarily with us as we serve the people of God who are here. I mean, those of you who are here with me, uh, the body and blood of the Lord are located here to my right, your left. I'm going to start with the vehicles to my far right, your left. And we're going to ask those of you who are the captain of your vehicle. If you are the driver or whoever is the designated person, you will come and you will receive communion for everyone that's in your automobile, right? Everyone that's in your automobile. I'm going to take five at a time, five at a time. We're going to ask that you would come and then so that we might be able to serve you. Let us pray for our sacraments and then we'll be prepared to serve the Lord's people. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're so thankful and grateful on this day that you have blessed us to assemble. Thank you, Lord, for a government that has not attempted to completely shut us down, but who have been kind enough to give us an opportunity to continue to serve you in the capacity that we have chosen. And so now, Lord, as we come, we come because our desire is to continue what you left on record for us, Lord Jesus, that as often as we would eat this bread and drink this cup, we would show your death until you would come again. And so, Father, we ask now that you would bless these sacraments, that as your people come, we will be blessed as we receive them, and we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, God bless you. I'm going to ask those of you who are on my far right, if you're coming to the Lord's table, if you would come at this time, if you would begin coming, hallelujah, amen. Those of you who are coming, we have a facility here for you to wash your hands, amen, and then you will receive your Lord's Supper. Come quickly, ma'am. Come quickly, sir. Come quickly, ma'am. Come quickly, sir. Amen. I need you to come. If the next five, if we next five, we want you to be prepared. Come on, please. Please. Come on, ma'am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for those who are coming. Come on. I need you to start here on this end. Amen. We're come, come on around here, my sister. Come on around on this end. Direct them, please, to come around on this end. Come around here, ma'am. Amen. You right, sir. Amen. Quickly, man. Quickly, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Come on, say it again with me. Let the glory, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. If everyone will hold on to your sacraments and we'll all eat and drink together. Oh, 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 oh,
One day, one day when I was lonely, he 
For the blood, come on. Hallelujah. God will make you shout in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody praise him for the blood. Somebody praise him for the blood. Somebody thank him for the blood. Hallelujah. If you're looking for a vaccine, I found it in the blood. If you're looking for something to heal, I found it in the blood. If you're looking for something to deliver us, I found it in the blood. The blood came streaming down. Hallelujah. And saved the wretch like you and I. Bless the Lord for the opportunity that we have to be in the presence of the Lord one more time. Can you help me just give God one more praise on today? Hallelujah for y'all that are online. Listen to the horns honking. Amen. We want the city to know we appreciate them. Amen. 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 I know we're sheltering. We're just sheltering in our automobiles right now. Amen. But we're believing God for great and mighty things. All right. I have a custom that I'd like to continue. Are you ready to eat? All right. All right. If you're ready to eat, then I'm ready to serve. Again, we thank the Lord for each one of you that are here. If you are a first-time viewer again with us on the broadcast, we want to extend greetings unto you. Just kind of let us know your name, where you're from, and then how you found out about the broadcast. Maybe you're just one who tuned in, but either way, we want to appreciate you, and thank you so much for being with us on today. We appreciate everybody who contributed to making this happen. And oftentimes, people go unappreciated and unannounced. But there's some brothers and some sisters who got here early this morning to make this happen. Did you appreciate your church? Did you appreciate your church? Did you appreciate your brothers and your sisters? These names don't often get called, but we can't do ministry uh, without one another. And so how many of you know we can do it better together? I mean, those of you who are viewing uh, again by home, if you're a part of the cathedral, we want you to know again how much we miss you and appreciate you. And as soon as the Lord is finished with what he is doing, we'll be back together. Because I refuse to give the enemy credit for anything that's going on. I believe God has his hand in everything that's going on. Amen. And he still sits upon the throne. Amen. And he is the one that is making sure that all things work together for our good because we love him and we're the called according to his purpose. All right. Our text today is found in the gospel according to St. Luke. The gospel according to St. Luke, if you were with us on last week, you remember we were sharing with you uh, the valuable lesson of understanding that perhaps you've come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And we wanted you to understand how Esther was that chosen vessel that God used. And in using Esther, he showed his uh, sovereign ability to do what he wants, when he wants, how he wants. But whatever he does, he does it collectively for the betterment of his people. So I want to encourage every heart today to know that whatever it is that's going on in and around us, I mean, oh, God has already worked it out for our good. All right, all right. We are in the gospel according to St. Luke chapter number 8. Our text is found in the 43rd or from the 43rd to the 47th verse. It is a very familiar passage of scripture. We know it as the passage that deals with this lady who they don't even give a name. But she is the one who has an issue of blood. We know that she's had this issue for the last 12 years. She's been trying to find a remedy for her calamity. She's been trying to find a cure for her situation. She needs a vaccine to help her in her endeavor to be made better or to be made whole. No matter what our circumstance or situation is, the Bible tells us that he's the Lord God that healeth thee. I believe he's our healer. I believe he's our deliverer. I believe he's our way maker. Amen. All right. Jesus is traveling and in his travels, he runs across a fellow by the name of Jairus. And Jairus has a daughter who just happens to be 12 years old. She's 12 years old. The 
lady in our text has been suffering for the last 12 years. And in his effort, his being Jarius' effort to cry out for healing for his daughter, he runs and grabs Jesus, falls down at his feet, and literally begs him to come to his house and heal his daughter. Does anybody know that you would have did the same thing? I would have ran, yes, yes, yes. And in the time in which Jesus is en route to healing Jarius' daughter, this woman interrupts him. She interrupts him because of the condition that she finds herself in. I think that we need to understand that every now and then the Lord doesn't mind us interrupting him. Maybe we as a people haven't interrupted him enough. We haven't shown him how much we really need him, how much we really desire him. And so here we find in the 43rd verse of the 8th chapter of the gospel according to St. Luke, herein begins our reading. The Bible says, and a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, she came behind him and touched the border of his garment. Another writer says the hem of his garment and immediately, somebody say immediately, immediately her issue of blood staunched or it dried up. It happened immediately when she touched the border of his garment. Verse 45 says, and Jesus said, who touched me? I need you to understand right here from the onset that this wasn't a normal touch. This wasn't a regular touch. Jesus is asking a question that he already knows the answer to. He says, who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude is thronging thee, pressing thee, and you have the audacity to ask, who touched me? And Jesus says, somebody in this crowd had enough tenacity, audacity, to go out of their way to make sure that they touched me. I know that they've touched me because I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him and declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. Would you look at a neighbor in your car or look at a neighbor in your house or look at somebody and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, when you can't touch me, touch Jesus. Yes, yes. Find another neighbor and say, neighbor, oh other neighbor. Did you hear what I said to my other neighbor? When they won't let you touch me, you better be able to touch Jesus. Amen. I want to preach to you today simply from the subject, don't touch me, touch Jesus. Yes, don't touch me because I can't help you in times like this. You better be able to touch Jesus. I don't know about you, but but, but I've discovered other very well that we are at a unique time, saints, in the existence of mankind. For the first time and the only time in my lifetime, people all around the world are being strongly urged not to touch one another. Yeah. I've never heard of this, never seen this, where we are strongly urged not to touch one another. We call it practicing social distancing. In other words, they have gotten us to the place where we are literally saying to one another, don't touch me. Because you have something that I might catch and I don't want it. So they're instilling inside of our mentality to lose the value of a touch. They don't want us touching one another. I get it. I understand. For some of you, that may not make much of a difference. Because you can, you're, you're that individual who can get by without the encouragement of a handshake or the comfort of a warm embrace. 
So for some of us, it's not going to bother us. However, there are a few of us who understand and appreciate the purpose and the power of what is transmitted by the comfort of a significant touch. Something happens when a touch is real and it's not just physical. I wish I had somebody who understood it. They, they are taking away from us or attempting to take away from us the very thing that God gave us to be able to be comforted by. And when I can't have somebody to hug me and embrace me, when I can't shake somebody's hand, I don't know about you, but that bothers me because I'm the kind of person that lives by a warm embrace. Uh, uh, there's something significant about a touch. Yeah. And by now you should realize I'm not talking about a physical touch. Now they can take away my physical touch, but there is something that happens when saints get together that has nothing to do with a physical touch. There should be somebody in your life right about now that touches your life that ain't got to touch your body. I, I, think, I think we can agree, saints, today that, that to some extent, uh, that something powerful takes place when we touch one another. Something extremely powerful takes place when we touch one another because there is a touch that runs much deeper than the physical. And since we have not really understood the spirituality of a touch, God has separated us for a season so that we could learn how to appreciate the value of a touch. Because a lot of us were practicing social distancing before they asked us to be socially distant. There's a lot of us who didn't like people anyway and you didn't want to be around. So when they said social distancing, it didn't bother you. But for some of us... We understand that a touch runs much deeper than me physically touching you. I can't get no help over there. But some of us miss one another. Do I have anybody in here that misses the presence of the righteous? That misses the presence of the saints? That misses it? Come on, somebody say, I miss the touch. I miss it. There's something about a touch. There's something about a touch. Even, even, hear me, even world-renowned scientists, don't miss this, even world-renowned scientists know the power of how a certain disease can be transferred by the simplicity of a touch. They know the value of a touch. And since a disease can be transferred simply by a touch, and since that is true, then can I submit to you that if a natural virus can be transferred through a human touch, then certainly the life-changing power of God can also be transferred by a touch. Come on, somebody. If you go trip and believe that you can give somebody a disease by a touch, well, when the disease leaves, why don't you believe that you can give somebody love by a touch? Why don't you believe that you can transfer the power of God by a touch? Why don't you believe that you can lay hands on somebody and their lives? You don't believe in the spiritual touch, but you sure believe in the natural touch. How do you know? Because you got a mask on your face. Because you're wearing gloves on your hand. You believe in a natural being transmitted, but you won't believe in the spirit. There's something about the power of a touch. And so I've come to believe, Elder Stoner, that since you and I have been urged not to touch one another, God is sending us a message. And that is, hear me, there will come a time when something will hit your life that can't be removed by human touch. Something is coming that will hit your life that can't be removed by human touch. In other words, I don't care how many scientists you get, I don't care how many doctors that you get, I'm gonna allow something to come that can't be removed by human touch. It can't be removed by a human hand because the people in this world have gotten, have forgotten the value that comes when we touch Jesus. Oh, we have forgotten and we've pushed Jesus to the backside. We've pushed
place the value of touching Jesus to the side. Uh, we no longer press to touch him. We became lazy. We became comfortable. And nobody now was pursuing after touching Jesus. So God says, I'll tell you what I do. Since you don't want to touch Jesus, I will allow a situation to happen in society where something will get on you where it can't be removed by a human touch. But I'll make you come begging. I'll make you come pleading. I'll make you hit your knees till you realize the only way for me to get healed is I've got to touch Jesus. Tell somebody, I've got to touch Jesus. Uh, when I looked at the text, when I looked at the text, when I looked at the text, the text that my brothers and sisters on social media, what I've always admired about this woman is her tenacity in the face of adversity. I've always admired, do I have any tenacious sisters out there? Do I have any tenacious mothers out there? Who ain't gonna quit till you get it done? Come on, I need some ladies who know I've got enough drive in me to make sure that I'm going to get whatever it takes for my family to be here. I'm going to get whatever it takes for me to get to. Only the sisters are blowing some horns right about now. I need some sisters to honk your horns for this woman who made it up in her mind and will get whatever it takes for me to be here. Uh, you see, I need to talk to a few sisters right now because brothers can't deal with her problem. Brothers don't understand her issue. We have never had to deal with what she's dealing with. Therefore, we need some ladies right about now who understand what this sister is going through. And you understand I can't keep going through what I'm going through. Bleeding like I'm bleeding. I need a touch. I need a touch. I need a touch. I need a touch. I need some ladies online who understand you brothers can't identify with it. You want a mic, but you can't deal with what we're going through. You want to preach, but you can't preach to me now. You can't preach to me about this one. You ain't been through what I'm going through. You don't know what it's like. Oh, God, help me here. Help me here. I've always admired her because of her tenacity in the face of adversity. This system, this system, has every reason to give up, pack it up, and just shelter in place. Y'all missed that right there. She has every reason to give up, pack it up, and shelter in place while she's dealing with her disease, while she's dealing with her calamity. But I found out that I know some of y'all sisters, and some of y'all don't like staying at home when you're going through. Some of y'all don't like being shut up when you're going through. Some of y'all from the ghetto. Some of y'all from the project. Some of y'all from places that we don't quit when it gets rough. We don't throw in the towel when it gets rough. We are some sisters that are straight up Amazon women. We don't play when it comes to messing with our lives. Yes, yes, yes. I need some Amazon sisters that's swinging through the atmosphere. I ain't talking about naturally, but you're going to swing through the atmosphere in the spirit until you get what you need from Jesus. I need some sisters who understand what God is doing in this season. He's raising up some women. He's raising up some ladies. He's raising up some sisters who understand I know where the answer is. Why are you running around trying to stop me from getting to Jesus? I know where the answer is. I done been to the brothers. I done been to the physicians. I done been to the doctors. Them people, I mean, them brothers can't help me. I need somebody who can help me stop me. This sister has every reason to give up. Pack it up and shelter in place while she's dealing with her disease. But she has the audacity to do three things. She has the audacity to pray, she has the audacity to press, and she has the audacity to push. Uh, she's going to pray, she's going to press, she's going to push till she gets to her place of healing and she gets to her place of deliverance. This is the problem with the church. We've lost our press. We've lost our ability to pray and we've lost our ability to push. We can't do nothing unless we are locked up in the four walls of a building. But God said, I know how to get your attention and I'll make you press. I'll make you pray and I'll make you push. I need about two or three people who understands the signs of the time. When you tell somebody, don't touch me, don't touch me, you better learn how to touch Jesus. So the text, the text teaches me two things and I got to get out of the way. The text teaches me two things, friend. It teaches me two things. Uh, uh, first, the text teaches me that touching.
see, Jesus brings about a real change. I said, touching Jesus brings about a real change. I, I, I might be messed up here, but I, but I gotta go uh, the way I feel with the Holy Ghost. Touching Jesus brings about a real change. Some of us may remember in Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 18, I think it's verse 19 and verse 20, where, where Jesus says, now, 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 if I can get two or three of you that will touch and agree on anything in the earth, and I'm paraphrasing, then, then it will be done for them. Because wherever two or three are gathered together, watch this, in my name, there I'll be in the midst. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Don't honk, I need you to listen this time. Are you he says, I need you to understand that if you will touch one another and you will agree with one another, that I'll be in the midst. I said, help me, Lord. He said, son, I told him I would be in the midst. And I've been in their midst. But that because just because I'm in your midst don't mean you touching me. There's a whole lot of us who have experienced his presence in the sanctuary, but we weren't hungry enough to touch him. And just because we have the ability to bring him in our midst doesn't mean that we touching him. There's a whole lot of us that have him in our midst, but we ain't touching him. And you ain't going to get your healing till you touch him. He can be in your midst and you'll still miss him. He can be in your presence and you'll still miss him. He can be right there in your automobile and you'll still miss him. He can be in the sanctuary and you'll still miss him. He can be in your house and you'll still miss him. He can be in the hospital and you'll still miss him because you ain't going to get him till you touch him. Tell somebody, I got to touch him. I got to touch him. Oh, I'm tired of shouting. I'm tired of praising. I need a touch. Come on, somebody. We ain't going to get healed until we learn how to touch him. Please hear me. This is not the season where we pray and ask God to touch us. This is the season where he says to you and I, if you don't get what you need, you're going to have to get off your lazy duck and touch me. I'm tired of you asking me, telling me I need a touch from the Lord. The Lord says you need to get a touch here. You need to turn out and touch me. Thank you, Lord. I, I, when I looked at it, I, I, I seen that here is this woman. Uh, uh, she's blessed uh, because she's in the presence of the Lord. Uh, but she realizes just being in his presence is not good enough. Just being in his presence is not good enough. The Bible says that while Jesus was there, the people were thronging him. They were thronging him, which means they were surrounding him and pressing him. Uh, but still there were some that left there unchanged. Mm. Just because you're in the multitude of being in his presence don't mean you're going to leave with a change in your life. Ah, you're going to have to make it up in your mind that if I'm going to get what I need from him, then I got to touch him. I can't get no help right in here. Aren't you tired of coming to the sanctuary, feeling his presence, but leaving the same way? Aren't you tired of coming to the house of God? Aren't you tired of being in a place where you hear him, but you can't touch him, and therefore you leave with the same mentality? You leave with the same affliction? You leave with the same condition? Well, I stop by to tell you today that the Lord done put something on the world that ain't going nowhere until we humble ourselves and get on our knees and crawl and learn how to touch him. You ain't gonna get a change until you learn how to get off of your horse and learn how to humble yourself and touch the Lord Jesus. Come on, clap your hands and tell him thank you. Touching, touching, touching Jesus brings about a, 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 a real, authentic change. A physical change as well as a psychological change. A physical change, which is what she's after, but she also needs a psychological change. Because for the last 12 years, her mind is messed up. Because I've been going to all of these physicians, I done spent all my money, and every time I turn around, I ain't seeing no change. That'll mess with your psyche. That'll make you think that you can't get help anywhere. And God has been trying to tell us that psychologically, a whole lot of us have given up. 
psychologically a whole lot of us have thrown in the towel. Our bodies are still coming to church, but our mind is somewhere on the other side of town. Psychologically, we don't believe that he can do it. Psychologically, we don't believe that he's a healer. We know we can shout. We know we can praise. We know we can sing. But does anybody know that he can heal? Come on, I know he's a savior. I know he is a savior. But I need to know him as a healer. I know that he's a provider. But I need to know him as a healer. I know that he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I could ask or think. But tell your neighbor, I need to know him as a healer. Here she is. Here she is. Here she is. She, she needs change in her life, but she just doesn't need physical change. She also needs psychological change. And the Lord says, son, look at her. Look at her. Look at her. I need you to take a close look at her. This is where my sisters can help me because her problem is one that generates from the inside out. How are you feeling me? She's bleeding from the inside out. Which tells me that her condition is internal and not external. I still ain't getting no help up in here. I said it tells me that her problem is internal and not external. Can I submit to you that the problem with the world is not external, but the problem is internal. Many of us are bleeding from the inside. We're bleeding from the inside. We're bleeding with problems. We're bleeding with issues. We're bleeding with fears. And we're trying to put a band-aid on what's going on. And God sent me to tell you today, you got the wrong idea, baby. I didn't come to just heal you physically. I came to heal you eternally. You miss what I just said. The world is looking for a temporary vaccine to fix us for this problem when this problem is not the problem. This problem is not the problem. This problem has to do with COVID-19, but the problem is mankind have turned their backs on the healer, have turned their backs on the savior. You try to get a vaccine that will help you externally when what you need is the blood that will help you internally. Sisters, y'all know what I'm talking about. I, I'm, tired, I'm tired of running around. I'm tired of having to put a band-aid on it. I'm tired of running around trying to stop it temporarily. I don't want to just stop amen, it from externally coming out. I want to stop it, period. I don't want to stop it for the moment. I want to stop it, period. Is there anybody tired of bleeding? Is there anybody tired of it pouring out of you? Is there anybody know that he is the healer? I dare you to clap your hands and tell him she needs a psychological healing as well as a physical healing because her problem is not internal, but her problem is, or her problem rather is not external, but her problem is internal. The second thing, and I'm out of your way, the second thing that I learned from the text, please hear me, is that touching Jesus is not an easy task. Yes. Touching Jesus is not an easy task. You're not going to touch Jesus just because you sat here for a few minutes listening to a message from a preacher and think I'm going to leave here and just touch Jesus. No! Touching Jesus is not an easy task. This woman has to deal with some situations if she's going to get her healing and her deliverance. And the church have sold us a bunch of goods. And they made us, told us, if you just lift your hands and tell them thank you, it's going to be all right. If you just run around the church for a little while, it's going to be all right. If you just come to the altar and cry a few alligator tears, it's going to be all right. But we done got hit with something that done told us and showed us it ain't going to be all right just by you raising your hands. It ain't going to be all right just by you touching and agreeing because you can't touch nobody right now. Ah, but I found out that if you going to get to Jesus, it's going to take something serious. It's going to take something serious. I need you to understand that this woman teaches us that there is a cost of real change when it comes to touching Jesus. Uh, we've been touching religion for quite some time. We've been touching the surface for quite some time. 
Oh, but if you're going to touch Jesus, you're going to have to go to the bottom of the pool. Yes, I hear you, Lord. Thank you. You're going to have to, I can't get no help up in here. You're going to have to go to the bottom of the pool. Because Jesus is not at the surface. Jesus is not a surface swimmer. He's not in the shallow end of life. But Jesus is in the deep end. And if you're going to get your healing and deliverance, you're going to have to learn how to swim to the bottom. You're going to have to learn how to get down to the bottom. You're going to have to learn how to leave the surface ministry and go down deep. Would you tell somebody we're going to have to go deep? Yes, we're going to have to go deep. Uh, the woman understands and she teaches us something uh, that I need a, a vaccine. I need a vaccine. I need something that's going to heal me, that is going to deliver me. And, and, and she's in a crowd of people. And this messes with me, brother. It messes with me because in that crowd is Peter. In that crowd is James. In that crowd is John. In that crowd are all of the disciples, but can none of them choke us? Help us. Because touching the preacher is coming to a day when touching the preacher ain't going to give you what you need. Oh, God, help me in here. God has got us on lockdown to show us you too dependent on the touch of a man. You too dependent on the touch of a human being. And I need you to understand that your healing is not in the bishop. Your healing is not in the preacher. Your healing is not in a man. Your healing is in your savior. Your healing is in your deliverer. Your healing is in the one that changes life for you. Your healing is in the one I need to touch him. And if I need to touch him, you sure need to know that the answer is don't touch me. You better trust Jesus. He's got us on lockdown so that we would understand that your answer ain't in a man. Uh, your answer ain't in a man. It ain't in Peter. It ain't in James. It ain't in John. It ain't in the physicians. What you have on you right now, you're going to have to get to Jesus. Oh, and the woman teaches us we've got to do two, three things. Tell somebody we better have a prayer life. Oh, we better have a prayer life. Oh, we better have a prayer life. And another writer, he writes and says that the woman, while she's in the crowd, she prayed to herself. She prayed to herself, Ali. And she began to talk to herself. I found out talking to yourself ain't bad. Because when you're locked up in the house, all you got is yourself. You gotta learn how to talk to yourself. And she prayed to herself and said to herself, if I can but touch, no, oh, I can't get no help up in here. I ain't no prayer lines no more. Ain't no help lines no more. You better have your own prayer line. You better be able to talk to yourself. You better be able to pray hands or pray for yourself. You better be able to lay hands on yourself. You gotta be able to help yourself to understand that if I can but touch the hymn of his garments, I can't touch the building, I can't touch the preacher, I better get to Jesus. Tell somebody we better be able to get a prayer for you. <laughs> she said to herself, uh, there's something about talking to yourself. You didn't like it till you got locked up. You didn't like it until you got locked down. Then you found there was a new you in you. Come on, Bishop. I can't get no help here. I said, anybody done discovered a new you in you? Some of y'all don't realize I don't need you Negroes in there. I thought that I needed her. Woo, but I done found out excuse my back. I don't need you like I thought I needed you. Oh, I'm gonna shelter in place. Shelter in place until I can find a new me. Anybody finding a new you inside of you? Anybody been praying until you discover a new you inside of you? You want to tell your neighbor, don't touch me. I ain't got the answer. You gotta learn how to touch Jesus. And when you can't get nobody, lay hands on yourself and tell yourself it's already over. Right. She, 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 she prayed within herself and she said if I can just touch the hem of his garment watch this she says I know 
I'll be made whole. She didn't say, I think I'll be made whole. She says, I know I'll be made whole. Sometimes when you buy yourself, you convince yourself that you can do what you didn't think that you could do. So God has to lock you down to change you so that you would realize ah, that there's inside of you there is, a, there is a woman on the inside of you that you need to introduce yourself to. There's a brother on the inside of you that you need to introduce yourself to. You got to learn how to touch and agree with me. I ain't talking about me. You got to learn how to touch and agree with your inner me. Touch and agree with your inner me. And tell your inner me. I know it don't look like it's going to be all right. I know it feel like it ain't going to be all right. But can you convince yourself that it's already all right? Can you tell yourself, I know it's all right. I know it's all right. You better clap your hands like you know it's all right. Yes, sir. The Bible says she prayed within herself and she said to herself, if I could but just touch the hem of his garment, watch this now. She says, I know I'll be made whole. She didn't say, I know I'll be healed. She said, I know I'll be made whole. Because there's a lot of healed people that ain't whole. Uh, whole means I'll be complete. I don't want to just be healed from the virus. I want to be made whole. Come on, somebody. Whole means not only has my situation stopped, but my mind is together. My heart is together. My life is together. Because it makes no sense for you to be healed from your bleeding, but you're still crazy in your mind. Makes no sense for you to be healed in your body, but your soul is still lonely. Makes no sense for your situation, your issue to be dried up, but you still thinking about Johnny. You still thinking about Mary. I'm about to dry up your thoughts of Johnny. I'm about to dry up your thoughts of Mary. I'm about to heal you and make you whole. Because you still mad at them doctors that didn't heal you. You still mad at them people that took your money. But I stopped by to tell you that everybody failed you that didn't do anything but push you to Jesus. Come on, clap your hands and tell him thank you. Somebody say, preach, Bishop. <laughs> if you honk your horn, I might do it. I might do it. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. I, I, I need you to understand. I need you to understand that she's a praying woman right now. Can I preach it like I feel it? She's a praying woman right now. Mm. And Sandra, 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 I need you to understand. What he's doing to her is making her not just a woman who can get a prayer through for her, for her but he's making her a woman who can get a prayer through for other women. He's making her an intercessor. So I stop by to tell my sisters, you ain't bleeding just for you, but you bleed for somebody else. You bleed for your sister that's coming behind you. You're bleeding for somebody else. Who you gonna need to lay hands on when you're gone? You're bleeding so you can be a blessing to somebody else. She can get a prayer through now. She ain't got to walk around and be worried about these doctors. She ain't got to walk around worrying about where she spent her money because she is praying and she knows she can get a prayer through. If I can but touch the hem of his garment. And in order for her to get there, not only must she pray, but how you know you're going to have to press. Uh, you know Paul said it. I got to press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God that's in Christ Jesus. But this is a different kind of press. This is the kind of press that the Bible says she touched the hem of his garment. Now, I, I, I ain't got no proof, and I ain't got no evidence, and I'm about to do something that they told us in seminary not to do, but I'm putting it out there anyway. I'm about to isogee the text. Isogee means to put your own thoughts in it, and if I get in trouble, it'll be all right with the Lord. I know I'm supposed to exegete the text, but I'm isogee the text, because in it, it does not say that the woman got on her knees. It doesn't say that she began to crawl, but it does say that she touched the hem of his garment. And I got a feeling in order to get down to the hem, she had to get down on her knees. I can't see it in the text, but I imagine it in my mind. 
that every now and then, in order to get what you need from God, I mean, you know, you're going to have to lay prostrate. And the reason why you're going to have to get down is because everybody's at the surface. She's thronging around everybody because everybody wants something from Jesus, but everybody don't want to be healed. Everybody wants something, but everybody don't want to be whole. Everybody wants to be in the church, but everybody don't want to trust Jesus. <laughs> She's got to press. And I said, Lord, help me. He, he said, son, she has to press past her past. She's got to press past her past. I wonder if the sister's going to be honest. you got to pass. And your past that you couldn't press past is preventing you from getting to the hymn. Uh, let me talk to the people that's on here because y'all ain't honking loud enough for me. You're going to have to learn how to press past your past. I can't get no help right here. Would you tell somebody, press past your past? Because your past will keep you from your future. Your past will keep you from your deliverance. Your past will keep you from your healing. And in her past, there are a bunch of men that she's still mad with. There are a bunch of doctors who done cut on her and she's still mad with them. There are a bunch of men in her past that done operated on her and she's still mad with them. Do I have any sister that's been operated on and you left worse than when you went in? Some of us, we would be honest, our past has us jacked up. Because our past, we can still feel the touch from our past. Some of you, you can still feel the touch of the men who abuse you. You can still feel the touch of the people who misuse you. And you'll never be able to get to Jesus till you get over your past. Tell somebody we got to press past our past. Oh, you wasted some money on a lot of people. And you're looking back at your past. And you're still trying to figure out, how can I get past my past? Tell your neighbor, you're going to have to press. I hear you, that's the way to go. Tell your neighbor, you're going to have to press past your past. Past doctors, past men, past money that you wasted, past lifestyle. Not only does she have to press past her past, but she has to press past her pain. She has to pass past her pain. She has to pass past her present. Because in her present, she's still bleeding. Can, 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 I, can I be an adult? Can we be an adult? Can we be mature? Can we be mature for just a moment? Because I need some sister who going to admit that every now and then you get some cramps. Stay with me, don't go carnal. Every now and then you get some cramps uh, when you're in that place. And the cramps begin to hurt down on the inside. And when you get cramps, you fall up in the middle of the bed. And you don't want to be bothered with anybody. Ain't nobody going to be honest. And your husband can't deal with it. He don't understand. So you lock him out of the room and say, get out of here. Because you don't understand. Do I have any ladies who know there's some pain that men can't deal with? There's some pain that men can't understand. Oh, I need somebody who understands I'm cramping right about now. I'm going through right about now. There's a pain called the COVID-19 that's cramping America right now. That's cramping the world right now. And we're trying to find healing. And we're trying to find deliverance for our present pain. But I need somebody to tell your neighbor, you're going to have to press. You're going to have to press past your back. She's going to have to press past her pain. I know I'm taking a little while, but I'm going somewhere. I need you to understand. Pain is not a reason for you to stop. Pain is never a reason for you to give up. Pain is never a reason for you to throw in the towel. Pain should be the element that keeps your tail going. I wish I had somebody right here. Uh, I'm going through some pain right now. But pain will either make you stay where you are or crawl just a little bit further. Uh, 
Lord help me in here. She's got people all around her because she has to press past her past, press past her pain, and finally she got to press past people. Oh, some of y'all ain't gonna never get your healing because you're still bothered by people. You ain't gonna never get what you need because you're still bothered by people. I need somebody to put their on that screen right there. Press past people. Especially crazy people. Especially them ignorant people. Especially them people that are designed who have an anointing to get on your nerves. You won't have to learn how to press past people whose assignment it is to get in your way and keep you from Jesus. You still ain't realize that the people that are blocking you are trying to block you from your blessing. They're trying to keep you from getting to Jesus. But I need somebody in here who done made it up in your mind that I see my past, I see my pain, and I see these people who are trying to get me from Jesus. But the Lord did us a favor and locked our tail out of the building and said, I'm going to move some people out of your way. I'm going to move that elder out of your way. That every time you go to the altar, they're stopping you from getting your breakthrough. I'm going to move Mary out of your way because Mary's still lying on you. Mary's still talking about you. I'm going to move Johnny up out of your way because every time you come around the altar, Johnny got his eyes on you and he's lusting after you. I'm getting ready to move people out of your way. I'm getting ready to shut it down. And the only people you're going to have to deal with are the people inside of you. And the only one inside of you is you yourself. The only one that can stop you from getting your healing is you yourself. I stop by to ask you, do you have enough power to press your way past your past? Do you have enough power to press your way past your cramps, past your pain? Do you have enough power to press your way past people? Somebody ought to shout glory. You ought to tell the Lord, thank you. Tell somebody, I headed to Jesus. I said, I'm headed to Jesus. Somebody clap your hands and tell him thank you. The Bible says, after she began to get past her pain, she began to preach. The crowd is looking around, and Jesus said, who touched me? I need you to understand. He wasn't asking who put their hands on me. He wasn't asking who it was that touched me with their flesh. But he said, who is it that had the audacity to press? Who is it that had the audacity to touch me with their faith? Who is it that had the audacity to touch me with their love? He looked at the man and said, how do you know somebody touched me? Jesus said, because the virtue has gone out of me. I stepped by to tell you, you ain't going to ever touch Jesus and know you touched him until you hear him say, virtue has gone out of me. Virtue is truth. Virtue is truth. Virtue is healing. I felt the healing come up out of me. I need somebody who's willing to press until you hear the Lord say, I feel you. Until you hear the Lord say, I hear you. I feel you. Here comes your healing. Here comes your deliverance. America, the world, if you want to be healed, get on your knees. If you want to be healed, press past the pain. If you want to be healed, get on your knees and crawl to Jesus until you touch the very hem of his garment. Come on, clap your hands and clap. Somebody shout glory. Tell your neighbor, 
name a name. No offense, but don't touch me. I don't have your deliverance. Don't touch me. I don't have your healing. If you want to be healed, you better touch Jesus. If you want to be delivered, you better touch Jesus. Clap your hands and tell him thank Come on and give him praise. Come on and blow your heart and give him praise. I may not be able to lift my hand, but I'll hold my horn. I'll shout hallelujah. Somebody shout, I need a touch. I need your touch. We need your touch. The world needs your touch. Hinesville needs your touch. America needs your touch. We need to touch it. We need to touch it like we've never touched it before. God is looking for people who will press past their past. We've talked about your past long enough to press past your painful current condition. I know it got, I know, I know it's crapping you. I know it's got you balled up in a knot. But I need you to be prepared to press past it. I know this condition has you in pain. So many are losing loved ones, so many are going through, but I yet believe in the healer. And I can press past my past, my pain, and get past these people. God has already done us a thing. And removing us from the presence of people. Because we don't have the healing for this situation. This is something that God has allowed. He said, those who can get to me can get the healing that they need. Your head's about your eyes are closed right where you are. Thank you, Jesus. Those of you that are online, thank you, Lord. Maybe you don't know the Lord Jesus. Maybe you just tuned in by chance and you heard something that convicted your heart. And you're ready to say, man of God, you know what? All of this that's going on in the world, I feel an unction. I've been in my house by myself and something's been in my bedroom with me. Something keeps hovering over me telling me that I need to change my life. That I need to get my life together. And you just happen to tune in today. I stopped by to tell you that the Holy Ghost is sending out a word of salvation to mankind. The Holy Ghost is using the airways to send out a word to mankind. Saying, then this season, your healing is not going to come through the touch of a human person. But your healing is only going to come when you can get on your knees, crawl through the clouds, press until you become one that touches the hem of his garment. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to high the text. Hallelujah, Jesus. The Bible says she touched the hem of his garment. And I said, Lord, could the fact that she was a hemophiliac have something to do with the hem? Because hemophilia has to do with a blood disease. She touched the very hem that could heal her from her hemophiliacs. God will me to understand, wants me and I to understand that what's going on is on the inside of us flowing on the outside and impacting other people's lives. But he's yet to heal. Father, we bless you today. We're praying for everyone that's under the sound of my voice. Whether it's in an automobile, whether it's on technology through a Facebook Live. Father, we thank you because you sent a word today to tell us and remind us of the importance of touching you and what it's going to take for us to touch you. We need more than just a physical change. We need more than just a vaccine that heals us physically. We need, God, something to deal with our psychological issues, our emotional issues, the things that have drove us away from you, the sin that drove us away from you, the desire, Father, that we began practicing social distancing from you a long time ago. We were distant from you, but now you've taught us the value of needing your touch, of needing the touch, our ability to touch you. And we thank you for it. Now, God, I pray for everyone in the sound of my voice that you would look kindly upon us, 
everyone that is afflicted naturally and spiritually, that you would allow them, God, access by faith into this grace wherein we now stand. Speak to their hearts. Help them to understand the value of a press. Help them to understand, oh God, victory belongs to them. And when all is said and done, Father, we'll give your name the glory. We'll give your name the honor. And we'll give your name the praise. This we ask in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say thank God. Amen and amen. Come on, somebody put hallelujah on the screen. I need somebody to help go home. Hallelujah. Come on, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. We appreciate all of you that were with us on Facebook Live. Thank you for being with us. Amen. We'll be back here again. Lord says the same on next Sunday. Perhaps we'll be streaming live again, but we will make sure that all of the saints that belong to the cathedral are aware of exactly how ministry will be conducted. But we ask that you pray with us and pray for us. That God will continue to bless us and use us. Pray for your city. Pray for your state. Pray for your nation. Pray for the world. Pray that God will take advantage of this humbling time to cause people to get to Jesus. One touch. And the Bible says the woman was immediately made whole. We want to see immediate change. It's going to come when we change our hearts, change our minds. And press our way to Jesus. So this is Bishop Benton on behalf of the entire Cathedral of Praise family. Saying to all of you that have been with us on our Facebook live. God bless you. God keep you. God cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. We bless you in Jesus name. Thank God for you. And amen. Hallelujah.